Hey devs, I'm really excited today because we're going to be talking about how to get started working with GitHub. We're going to take a look at how you can create your account, create your first project, and start working with GitHub and push your changes from your local machine up to the remote GitHub repository and then be able to pull those changes down from any machine that you're working on. And this is where the power of GitHub really comes into light. With this workflow, we can jump on any machine, grab our project, start working. Other people can grab the code and start collaborating with us. And it really allows us to build software in a distributed fashion and it allows us to preserve our history and really makes the whole software development process easier. Okay, let's start off by creating our GitHub account. So we'll start by going to github.com. If you don't have an account, you'll then be presented with this sign up screen. From here, you can choose your username and you'll have to specify an email and a password once you've chosen valid inputs for all of those fields, you can click sign up for GitHub. You'll then be directed to configure your plan. Now in our case, we'll just leave selected the free option, which is unlimited public repositories, and then we'll hit continue. From here now, if we click the icon in the upper right, we'll see signed in as, and then your username. From here, we can then click on your profile. This is then your landing page for GitHub. Let's start off by customizing this a little bit. So you can add a bio, which people will see when they view your GitHub profile. We'll hit save. You can then edit your photo if you would like, and you can fill in additional information about your public profile. And because GitHub is a bit of a standard nowadays in the industry for viewing information about you, it's not a bad idea to fill this out if you're going to be sharing this on things like your resume or your social media profiles. Once we're back on the profile screen, we'll notice a number of tabs at the top. So we start off on the overview tab, but then there's also repositories, stars, followers, and following. So these are some of the more social aspects but we're gonna be focused on the repositories tab, which will list our repositories and projects. Now that we have our account set up, let's create our first GitHub repository. From the repository tab, click new. We'll then start by filling in the repository name. You can then enter an optional description. If this is gonna be a public facing project that you might wanna show off to recruiters, then it's a good idea to add a description to this project so others know what it's about. We'll then leave this as a public project. You can optionally choose to initialize that project with a readme if you would like, and even add a git ignore or a license file. But for now, we'll leave those options blank. And once done, we'll select Create Repository. Once the project's created, we're taken to that project page within GitHub. If we navigate back to our profile and then go to the Repositories tab, we'll now see that we have a single repository listed. Once we open that back up, from here we can view the commits, our branches, releases, the contributors, any issues or wiki, this is really the home page now for our project and source code. So let's start off by adding a new file. We're going to name this file1.txt. And we'll enter just a basic message here saying that we created this file within GitHub itself. Now down at the bottom, we can enter our commit message and an optional further description if we would like. Then we can choose to commit directly to master or create a new branch. Now, normally we would wanna create a new branch to work off, but for this example, we'll keep it simple and commit this directly to master. Excellent. Now that we have a repository, let's set that up on our local machine so that we can push changes from our development machine back up to the remote repository on GitHub. So we'll see that we have our two files in the repository. If we then wanna bring this down to our local machine, we have a couple of options. 
Start by clicking on the green button that says Clone or Download. From here, we can see that we can download a zip, open in desktop, or we can clone from the command line using Git. To do that, we'll select the URL, we'll copy that, then open a terminal window, do git clone, and paste in the URL and hit enter. This then clones the repo to our machine. We now have that project directory on our machine. If we open up that directory, and list the files, we'll see that we have both files present on our machine. Let's now add a third file from our local development machine. So we'll open the text editor, we'll add our project directory, we'll then create a new file, this time leaving a message indicating that this file was created from our local development machine. Once that's done, we'll save this as file2.txt. If we then do a git status, we now see we have an untracked file named file2.txt. We can add that file, and we can then see now that we have changes to be committed. We can then commit them with our git commit-m command, and we'll include a commit message indicating that we added a second file. Now if we do git log, we see all three commits we see our initial commit that was added in GitHub, the second commit from GitHub, and then finally our new created file that was from our local machine. So now if we go back to GitHub, we refresh this, we might be thinking, wait a second, I only see two commits in GitHub. How come I don't see this new third commit that I added on my local machine? To make that new commit appear, we need to do git push origin master. This will then ask us for our GitHub username and password. Once we've entered those and hit enter, it'll push our local commit history up to the remote repository hosted on GitHub. Once those commits are pushed, if we go back to GitHub and refresh, we now see the third commit appear in our GitHub history. So now this commit is available to anybody that clones this repo on their local development machine. Now that we have some code and some commit history in GitHub, let's see what it looks like to pull those changes back down and start working on another machine with that same project history. Let's do a fresh clone of this project to simulate what it would be like to set it up on a new machine. We'll click the green button again select the repository URL and copy it to the clipboard. I'm gonna then remove the old version of the project just to show that we can start fresh and maintain our history from the remote repository. So I'll remove the old working directory. I'll then do git clone and paste in our repository URL. The project will be recloned and if I then do an ls, I now see that we have all three files present. And if we do git log, we see our full commit history as it appears in GitHub. There you have it. You now have a GitHub account set up and know how to start tracking your project's history and pushing that back up to GitHub. With this workflow, you don't have to be quite as worried about losing your entire project, about breaking something and not knowing how to change it. It frees you up to rethink how you build your software and build it in a safer, more consistent way. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Until next time.